Nestor Fantini was only 22 when the Argentine military seized control of his country in the early 1970s. Not only the president is arrested, but also they closed down Congress, they, they appointed the judges that supported the military, and, and at some point they started to arrest average citizens. Fantini witnessed his fellow Argentinians face torture and oppression, which he says military leaders use to maintain social order and eradicate political opposition. Growing in a country where they talk about democracy, but on the other hand, I mean, you see authoritarian and totalitarian the, the systems, obviously creates a contradiction in the mind of any young person. And that's what happened with me. Em. So it wasn't long before he realized he needed to stand up against the state-sponsored terrorism. As a young student, I felt that I had to make a contribution to change. In 1974, the Argentine military, known as Las Juntas, caught up with Fantini. At some point, in Córdoba, Argentina, I was having a cup of coffee in this coffee shop that's called El Ruedo in downtown Córdoba and uh, I was uh, arrested. That's when my second chapter in my life starts, when I end up in various political prisons. In prison, Fantini says he was routinely beat and tortured. They were concentrating political prisoners and from all over the northern provinces of Argentina. We were constantly harassed that the soldiers will come into the prison at any time during the day or night and that they will start to beat us up. But despite the harsh treatment and punishment, Fantini says he never lost hope. I felt very strong because uh, I had ideas of trying to improve my country and um, I felt that uh, if we were going to be killed, at least, I mean, we were in the right side. Huh? In 1979, after five years of imprisonment, Fantini says he was surprised to learn that he was going to be released. It was a very exciting moment, of course, in my life. The generals were, were still in power, and my life uh, was in danger. And even though Fantini says he was excited to leave the problems of Argentina behind, he knew he would carry the trauma from his experience with him forever. There is nothing that I have done, nothing that probably I will do in the few years that I still have, that uh, it's not uh, related to what happened to me in, in the, those years. While traveling as a survivor, telling his story, he hopes to pass on a message of hope to young people that want to make a change, just like he did. Keep doing what you're doing, multiply your efforts, and make sure that uh, in 10 or 20 years from now, you say, wow, I helped change the world, and you will definitely do it. So the next time you use your voice, be sure to remember all those that have been radically silenced and tortured for using theirs. Reporting from Argentina for Mustang Magazine, I'm Adeline Jeanette.